travel down to the Cape Coast is one of the things I had on my bucket list. It's a, it's a popular coastal area in Ghana. Um, we also visited the, the Cape Coast Castle, which is um, a very significant historical um, place for the people of Ghana. And this is the, uh, the port where most of the West Africans uh, slave trade where the, the, the slaves left the country. Um, very, very distressing. The tour, we did the last tour of the afternoon. I just found the, th the whole thing quite distressing. Uh, I didn't stay with the tour for very long. Um, I got out of there and went and flew the drone. Harry stayed on and um, captured a little bit of stuff as he could with the, with the GoPro, although the GoPro doesn't like uh, dark light. So um, there's not a lot of footage, but um, I would suggest look up the history of the Cape Coast um, it's a very special place for the, the people of Ghana. Uh, thank goodness the slave trade ceased in 1807, um, but oh, what a dark past this place had and it was it's terribly distressing. Uh, I won't go into it, yeah, it was too much for me, some of the, the dungeons and things that we looked at. Um, but anyway, I hope you, hope you enjoy the video. Um, do yourself a favour, get to understand the history of this place and hopefully you never see anything like this ever again. Cheers. The fortunate ones when they arrive in a castle, before they take them into their respective dungeons, they take them to a place here known as a palava hall. At a palava hall, doctors and nurses are present. They will examine and check their pulse, separate weaker parties from the stronger parties. The weaker parties are the domestic parties. They will be kept in the same dungeon as they will be in the domestic parties. While the stronger parties will be in the domestic parties, they will put it into fire. When it's hot and red, they smell oil on their chest, their arm, on the back of their chest. As soon as this metal is hot and red, they take it from the fire straight to their bare skin. So that the Elisha or the local Obama, accompanied by some family members, they came into the castle, had a walking tour of their hair and they took the first castle to the New York area. So when they came to the next, they left the story of 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 the story Coming in and out of the castle, this is an original door, a little over 200 years, made of pitch pine timber. And they have three of these doors at the entrance. The very first one, one in the middle, and the very last one. So I said this is where they kept the rebellious captives or the freedom fighters. But before they come in here, they beat them up at the courtyard. When they are weak, they leave them in here to die. So no man came in here and came out alive. In here, there is no little space for ventilation or sunlight, no food, no drinking water. You would have to stop, suffocate and die. So assuming they put about 30 men in here, a soldier keeps checking up on them. When he comes and 10 out of the 30 are dead, 20 are still alive. He doesn't take the 10 dead bodies out. He still leaves the 10 dead bodies inside, still together with the 20 that are still alive, for them to smell all the bad odor who bring around the dead bodies. Finally, when all the 30 are dead, they bring these dead bodies back into the courtyard. Go in for some of the captives to come and have a look at the dead bodies as a sign of caution or warning to them that if you also try to rebel, you come in here, you are going to lose your lives. Right after the captives are being taken back, dead bodies are being thrown into the ocean. <laughs> Total darkness. This used to be a storage room later, they had to block the side and use it as a condemned cell. So just one door closed. We are not even many in here. We can all feel the heat in here. So imagine locking all the three gates, leaving about 30 or even 50 men in here to their fate. No space for ventilation, no sunlight, no food, no drinking water. You can see. You, so said, you can see it very dark. Yes. Just because you are fighting for your freedom. At the end of the day, they did nothing wrong. 
This is their land. You even have to go to the extent of lying to some of them that you were taking them abroad for good living. By the time they realized they were in chains and in shackles, being kept in dungeons, waiting for ships to arrive for you to transport them. So, and even if you are taking them abroad to go and work on plantations for you, why would you treat us good? Or were they scared of us? I think they were, because yeah, even yeah. still in chains and in shackles, they knew right. what we would have done to them. Because if they when they arrived, if they had access to find them hand in hand. They would never have won against us because we are much stronger than them. And that's the main, yes. That's the main reason why they needed us more. But when they came, they came with guns. We've never seen guns before. We don't even know how it's been operated. So this, we were brought in by sisters and brothers to pay homage to those that stood their ground. So we fought for freedom. Due to that, they had to lose their so lives. So we brought in here. They have no idea whether it's day or night. No. So you die, you don't go out. So when they bring you in here in the morning, you don't even get to know that it's, it's, it's evening time or it's yeah, even in the next day. You are just in here. No if you don't no food, no drinking water. Wow. Alright, but I am going to be with you soon, huh? Okay. Yeah. I think as at that time we didn't really understand the whole Yes, I don't think they knew what to say. Oh, even what when they trade off the people, some of the chiefs and elders knew how they were treating yeah. them here. Yeah. Others didn't know. Those that knew did nothing about it. Because either they were also scared or they just wanted to continue getting all the benefits they were getting from them. This whole yard was a barracks for about 120 soldiers, white soldiers. So this is where the soldiers would sleep. The middle part was their canteen, where they would dine morning, afternoon, and evening. But later, this place was being used as a prison. Because after Captain George McLean, I said, Command this is where the very first shower was like, the, you see, the Ashanti's have so much gold. And when the Portuguese arrived at Elmina, 1400, they realized that the Ashanti's were bringing in uh, Gold in exchange for salt. Already, Elmina was called a man sample because there was a slave trade, or the British were evacuating, and the, the Ashantis were being traded with them. The Fantis. When the when the Europeans arrived, they did not start with the human slave. They were just trading in natural resources, gold, ivory. So it was butter trade. You bring something, I give you something. That was how it all started. Later, when they needed people to work on plantations, when um, Christopher Columbus made the claims that he discovered America and therefore he started plantations over there, and they needed people because they are native Europeans, the Red Indians were dying. Some also say that they killed them. So when they needed people, they said they killed them, yes. So Bartholomew de las Casas brought a suggestion that, okay, then let's come in for African men and women to go and work on the plantations over there. So they are relatively important in human sleep. It was a trade of natural resources. But look at all these big rivers. Enough ventilation, enough sunlight. It was being enjoyed by one man because they were not bringing their wives and kids. I said they were dying of malaria. Therefore, they leave their wives and children behind. The men will come down here to do their trade. When they want to go in bed with women, they go and take our female captives. When pleasures has been satisfied, they take them back. So I expect that the that we have in the fight, the Asia and the land, coming into the city, two months before they arrived, with a bottle of poison, they put gunpowder into this cannon. They will now put the cannonballs inside. They will light up fire over here. When it heats up, they rotate it to the angle where the attackers are coming. When the cannonballs inside heat up, it moves straight into the attacking ships. Because ships are made of wood, when it penetrates, it leaves a hole. The ocean water begins to enter, the ships begin to sink. That is the main reason why the British could stay here from 1665 to 1970. Up on the hill, straight up. That is the second fort, Fort Victoria. Yes. Okay, 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 okay. So two forts was protecting the Cape Coast Castle from attackers. Straight and then hand in hand with the Yes. Therefore, gave himself scholarship to 
to go in to train as a teacher, also a college man. He didn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. This was connected to the roofs of the castle to harvest rainwater. So this is where they would get water to keep their food also drinking water. From. I said from a seminar so they don't shower again. Mm. But anytime they want to rape our females, they bring them up here. Well. It's just crazy. Yeah. 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 Traveled with these two caskets by land. But from Abanzu to the castle, they came by the ocean. They could have used the entrance, but no. When the captives were living, they left through this door, never returned, and left shackles over here. So these two descendants of death are supposed to go back into the same castle through the same door and bring the shackles over here. When they got here, they poured libation and prayed. They ushered these two caskets back into the castle to give them a very big African funeral ceremony to signify their great homecoming. After this ceremony, they took these two people back to ascend to the slave trade market.